Hey everybody, it's Alex from Native Scripting. Don't worry about all the boxes, I just recently moved. So today I wanna to show you async await in Native Script. If you like async await, and if you were trying to use it in Native Script, there's a little bit of a trick to do that. Async await was really cool by the way, so you should be using it. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm gonna start showing you this from scratch. Now it doesn't matter if you're using Native Script with Angular or Native Script with TypeScript, async await will work the same way because that's a JavaScript concept. So here we are, I just created a brand new application, native script application from scratch using the ng flag. And this gives me a simple master details app like this. Everybody's probably already familiar with this. Uh, let's take a look at what we can do here. Here's the code for it. And in the app folder, we have the item folder and we have this item service. Now this item service is where we have all these football players hard coded. This is where we're pulling them from. And this get items function is what returns the items to us, each item being a football player. So let's make that public because I just like to be explicit about that. And instead of just returning the item array, and I'm going to just convert this to a promise based implementation, because most of the time when we're fetching data from the internet, we're going to use the HTTP API, or we're going to use the fetch API, we're not just going to have that data and return it. So to simulate that, I'm going to return a new promise of item array type. And then I'm going to resolve this dot items. And we don't need this return statement down here. So here we are, we're just returning a new promise. And inside the promise, we're resolving the items. Now, a lot of times you also want to filter that out. So each promise can have a then on it. So let's say we want to filter this before we return it to our client, return items filter. And for each item, let's return items with IDs that are less than equal to three just so you can see that this is in fact working. So we should see only two items here, these two up here. Now let's take a look at the consumer. The consumer is this items component. This is where we're calling item service dot get items on the initialization of this component. And right now it doesn't work because get items returned to us a promise. So I'm gonna delete this part. Then we're gonna have our items here. When that returns, we're gonna set this dot items equals items. Okay, nothing new here. I'm gonna save all this. And you'll see that when our app refreshes, we get our two football players. So now we've converted this implementation to a more realistic promise like approach. Let's go back to the item service. Now, how do we make this async await? The reason we use async await in the first place is to get rid of these long promise chains like we see here where we have a promise and then we do a then. Let's go ahead and convert this. By the way, Visual Studio Code has a little feature. If it detects this kind of thing going on where you're returning promises that are chained, it can give you an option to convert this to async. I can press that, but instead what I'm gonna do is just manually convert it so you can see how that's done. It's not hard. All you have to do is make this function async, and then let's come down here. Instead of returning this promise, I'm gonna create a constant called items, and I'm gonna set that constant to the result of the promise. But instead of continuing, I'm gonna await that result. So in other words, I'm gonna wait here until we get those items from wherever they're coming from. It could be from the internet or whatever. And this is gonna hang around here and not execute the next lines of code that I'm about to write until those items are there. So I'm gonna go here and terminate the statement right there. And where my cursor is right now, I'm not gonna reach this point until my promise resolves. So here I'm gonna say return items filter, and then I'm just gonna filter it just like the way I did before. Filter ID, let's do something different just to try things out. Uh, this time I want the item ID to be greater than or equal to 23. So we should get these three football players instead. And I don't need this code down here. Okay, so you see we've converted this into async await, and now we're returning the filtered items. But this method knows that inside we're doing an async operation, so it's still gonna return a promise. So you don't need, really need to change your API call here in the component. It should just work. Let me go ahead and save this item service, and when the app refreshes, uh-oh, what happened? We don't see anything here. Well, there is a little trick that you need to do in native script in order to get this working. And the reason it doesn't work in native script is because we're missing the definition for a waiter and we're missing the definition for generator. 
These are the functions that actually live underneath of the async await syntax sugar and actually define what's going on in the back end. So if I take a look at my console right now, you'll see that we have a bunch of errors and I'm showing you these so you can see what to look for in case you run into this again. Right now you can see that it can't find variable underscore underscore awaiter. So we need to define that. Well, luckily Microsoft provides a nice definition of this for us. And what I'm gonna do is paste in this code I'm gonna go up to my app folder. I'm gonna create a file called tslib.nativescript.ts and I'm gonna paste this code in here. Now it's a little scary at first when you take a look at it, but really all it does is it defines a global function called underscore underscore awaiter and it also defines a global function called underscore underscore generator. I didn't write this. Uh, somebody very, very smart wrote this at Microsoft and you don't have to write this either. I will give you the URL down below. And also if you're reading the article that's associated with this, you can copy and paste it from there. So I have this definition for those two functions. I'm gonna save this, but it's not gonna work just yet. We need to actually go ahead and import that. So I'm gonna go here in main.ts and I'm gonna import the tslib.nativescript module. And now we have those global functions available and we have results. Here are the football players. So now we've successfully converted this function to an async await function. But you don't have to stop there. If you are using Angular, you can also go to your component. And here we have a chained then statement also. You can also convert this to an async await. Now, just because you could do this doesn't mean you should. And I'll qualify that in a second. So here I'm gonna say constant items. I'm gonna set that to this dot item service get items. But we're gonna await that. And after that's done, I'm gonna set this dot items to items. And there we go, we still get that working. However, what I said before is just because you can't do that doesn't mean you should. Right here, you're messing with the life cycle of an Angular component. And who knows, that might change in the future. So I personally would avoid doing something like this, but this is just here to show you that you can. I would stick to doing async await operations in some kind of uh, your core service layer or your own code like we did here in the item service. Okay, so I hope this helped you out. And if you like this video and more videos about NativeScript, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And for more in-depth NativeScript learning, go to nativescripting.com where you can find full video courses about NativeScript, both Angular and Core. Okay, till the next video. See you, folks.